Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Curtis W. and Charles F. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Also, real quick, if you're saving the link for the 3D mats for use in the future, they did give me a new link, so if you can use that one, that would be great. I'll have it linked below. On the channel, we already talked about Brad and Bill in their podcast, where they were talking about Tesla's FSD12. Elon reposted that, saying, accurate analysis, only about one ten thousandth of distance driven is useful for training. The limiting factor for FSD progress was AI training compute, but now it's validation as the interventions are so rare. Now, if we assume that Elon means distance driven is miles on FSD, if we then guesstimate that Tesla is doing about 1 billion miles, we'll just call it every quarter right now. If you divide that by 10,000, that would be 100,000 miles per 1 billion miles on FSD that are actually useful for training the system, meaning a lot of those miles are just cruising around where there's not much happening. We also now have the limiting factor for FSD progress being validation, which I'm expecting to mean Tesla testing a new version of the system after it's been trained before they can then actually deploy it to customers, aka they have to validate the new system before it's deployed. With those new systems, they have to do a stress test of sorts to find some edge cases to see how it's actually going to to perform and that right now is the limiting factor. Naturally, having more cars doing this quality assurance testing would help to find those interventions a bit faster, but how many people do you trust with that new build software? Then there's the question about synthetic data and don't forget what Elon said in March of this year. The vector sum of humans on team, usable compute and unique access to data define AI competitiveness. It's remarkable how quickly we run out of human created data Data, reality itself, and synthetic data for the win. Simply put, right now, as Tesla is on the march of the nines towards solving autonomy, it's becoming harder and harder to find that next nine. Which, yes, on one hand is a great thing, but now, on the other hand, it's actually the limiting factor for FSD progress. NHTSA released a letter that it just sent to Tesla, and they're requesting a lot of data about autopilot from Tesla. As it is now, Tesla has until July 1st to complete the data transfer request, but they could always request an extension. Basically, this is NHTSA saying that they are not satisfied with how Tesla has handled the former autopilot recall, which was almost all of their roughly 2 million vehicles in North America. That's because even after the remedy or the recall fix, NHTSA still found 20 accidents with autopilot engaged. Nine were the frontal plane striking a vehicle, object, or person in the travel path, six were losing control, and five were inadvertent steering override, people canceling auto steer, but keeping traffic aware cruise control on. One of the main thrusts of that original recall was Tesla's inadequate driver monitoring of autopilot. We're not going to cover everything that NHTSA is requesting because it is a long list, but I'll have this official document linked below. Just a few examples though, Tesla has to provide specific data about every vehicle it has sold or leased in the United States. And as you see on the screen, yes, it is a rather detailed list. Tesla has to provide the cumulative mileage covered by each model and each year and list the specific hardware of each vehicle. Describe in detail the process Tesla used to deploy that recall update. They need to provide account of the hands-on wheel warnings displayed by the subject system again by model, year, and hardware version. And that's only five shorter bullet points on this list that includes 17 requests for data total. And as you can see, a lot of these bullet points actually have many sub requests as well. So this is just an alarming amount of data for Tesla to put together right after mass layoffs. Pretty brutal for Tesla to have to now spend time putting all of this together. However, in time, hopefully some of this data actually becomes public information. Just to be clear though, this is only for autopilot, they say right here, not including full self-driving supervised beta. If the deadline comes and goes and Tesla does not file an extension, the fine is $27,000 per day, about for a maximum penalty up to $135 million. 
We know millions of people are being deceived by the media propaganda and narratives rather than the data and the facts. That's probably why so many of you have reached out to tell me how much you've appreciated finding Ground News, the sponsor of this video. Ground News gives readers an efficient, data-driven way to objectively read the news. It was developed by a former NASA engineer and there's a mobile app and a browser extension as well so you can get breaking news on the go. In just a matter of seconds, I can see all of the sources reporting on a story and the headlines for the left-leaning sources, the right-leaning, and those in the center. Plus, in just a few seconds, using the tags right here, I can see which of the articles have the highest factuality, saving me time, and I can also see who actually owns each source. With the election coming up in the US, propaganda is at an all-time high, and the blind spot tab shows me which news I items are being disproportionately covered by the left and the right. I'd highly encourage you to go check out their election page so you can see all of the candidates and all of the latest breaking news with all of the political bias for each source. So if you'd like to support the channel and a company doing important work, you can head to ground.news slash electrified to subscribe through my link, or you can get 40% off unlimited access to the Vantage subscription, which is what I use. The link is in the description below and the QR code is right on the screen. We have an account on X that I cannot vouch for, but they shared a video of a Tesla Semi at Costco in Santa Cruz. But it's not just Costco that's helping Tesla with the validation of the Tesla Semi. We also have videos out there of Cisco and US Foods testing the Tesla Semi. Of these three new potential Tesla Semi customers, so far only Cisco has placed an order. They reserved 50 Tesla semis a few years back. I won't be surprised if in the weeks ahead we get more videos from another three companies as Heinrich Zane has said there's as many as nine companies testing Tesla semis right now. We already know of Pepsi, Walmart, Martin Brower, Cisco, Costco, and US Foods. Tesla has released a new tactical gray interior for the Cybertruck and a new 20 inch core wheel design and aero cover. The new tread design provides improved range up to 340 miles for the all-wheel drive and 320 for the Cyber Beast. A bit of information came out about Elon's meeting with Argentina's president Javier Millet and Elon said, I recommend investing in Argentina. The word is they met for about an hour. They discussed lithium. And the Argentinian ambassador to the US said, we're very committed not only to exporting raw materials, but also to adding value. Elon said he wants to help Help Argentina. Javier and Elon discussed the possibility of Tesla making investments in Argentina during Elon's upcoming visit to the country later in the year. One problem that Argentina is struggling with at the moment, they have the highest inflation rate in the world at 288% year over year. If a certain bill passes in Argentina, Javier will have the ability to grant 30 years of tax benefits to large companies. Argentina is thought to be on track to match and potentially even surpass neighboring Chile as Latin America's leading lithium provider by 2030. Latin America currently supplies about 35% of the world's lithium, 26% of that from Chile, and 6% from Argentina. The region is estimated to hold more than half of the global lithium reserves, mainly located in Argentina, 21%, and Chile, 11%. One analyst said Argentina has infinite untapped resources when it comes to mining. We're talking about a new Chile, if not more. The weekly Tesla China data came in at 11,000. Comparing that to the same week in quarter one, that number was 10,600. But if you compare it to the same week in quarter two of last year, that number was only 5,900. So Tesla making up ground when it comes to year over year comparisons. Quarter over quarter, Tesla China is still down 14.3% and year over year still down 16.5%. One thing to note, the breakdown for the week was 10,400 Model Ys and only 600 Model 3s. Typically the Model 3 number when we get reliable data is between two and 4,000. My guess would be it's just how the allocation worked out for exports of the Model 3 Plus from Shanghai for the week. There was a report that Giga Berlin was shutting down for four 
four days due to protests, but it's really only missing one day of actual production. Thursday is actually a holiday over there and they don't produce cars on the weekend anyway. So production will end with a late shift on Wednesday and begin again with the night shift on Sunday. Again, Thursday is the holiday, so the only day of production they're actually missing is Friday. That's because activists have announced several protests against Tesla's expansion for the coming week, including a rally in front of the factory gates on Friday. We recently talked that Piedmont Lithium was close to getting official approval for that open mine pit in North Carolina. They just had to post the bond. Well, now they did that, so it's officially official. As far as we know, a large portion of the resources from this mine will ultimately be supplying Tesla. For Mr. Beast's 26th birthday, he's giving away 26 Teslas to his followers, and it looks like one of those is a Cybertruck. So of all the brands he went with Tesla, and I think that says something. It may take 10 or 20 years, but when the next generation grows up and has more disposable income and they're driving, I think the next generation will be even more open to buying a Tesla because they've grown up with screens and with phones. And many younger people that I know in my circle love Tesla, they just can't yet afford one. Tesla Manufacturing put out a video about its new private 5G at Giga Berlin. With private 5G, we enable mobile machines to communicate ultra reliably and just keep running all the time. Now, it's really that small antenna over there on top of cell building, connecting this whole outbound area, helping us update hundreds of cars, run logistics operations, Smoke Away on X posted a hypothetical Optimus production ramp and Elon chimed in saying, not quite that fast, but not far wrong. Coming back, the timeline was 1,000 for 2024, 10,000 for 2025, 100,000 for 2026, and 1 million for 2027. Obviously the post was just multiplying by 10 for each year, so maybe something slightly less than that. Who knows what happens toward the end of the decade, but I'm looking at 20 2025, potentially a few thousand could be squarely in the mix. That same account said humanoid robots are a quadrillion dollar market, to which Elon said no real limit because an economy is productivity per capita times capita, intelligent humanoid robots uncork capita. This is quickly becoming one of Elon's favorite go-to messages. If we accelerate electrification of company cars, we create a guaranteed demand instrument for the car makers to meet their own electrification ambition. Did you know that today, six out of 10 new cars are actually not private, but company cars? This public consultation on greening corporate fleets is only the beginning. The next European Commission, within its first 100 days, should come forward with a regulation setting binding electrification targets for large fleets and leasing companies. 100% zero emission by 2030 at the very, very latest. Transport and Environment is Europe's leading NGO pushing for a sustainable future. They're clearly recommending that corporate fleets go 100% EV sometime before 2030. Wave is an autonomous tech company based in the UK and they just raised over a billion dollars. Part of this round includes Nvidia. This round was led by SoftBank and Microsoft is a part of it as well, but the valuation was not disclosed. Wave is taking the comma AI approach in that they don't want to have have their own fleet. They don't want to actually own the cars. They just want to develop the system and then either sell or license that to all of the other automakers. The company received interest from several car companies about investing, but decided not to close off its options in the future by partnering with a single manufacturer. Wave was founded in 2017 and their CEO said they plan to begin with driver assist technology. The funds will be spent on new staff and compute power, and this should be the last time the company raises a large large chunk of money as it starts to profit from commercial deals. Wave plans to open a research center in Vancouver, its third location after London and Mountain View, California. You may remember this video from Bill Gates about one year ago where he was taking a test ride in a Wave outfitted vehicle in London. Their CEO said, we've been all in on an end-to-end -end AI approach since we started in 2017 and were unique in doing so. It was fun to see Tesla last year pivot to this approach. It's it's nice for them to join the club. He said, we're not releasing specific launch timelines at this stage, but we're busy working with a number of manufacturers toward this point and it's going to be an exciting day when it comes. 
In one of the more recent updates we got from Wave, they said they believe cameras and radar will be the most important sensors for building a safe and affordable AI driver system. One year ago, they said, we're excited to announce the introduction of radar in our sensor suite, starting with our second generation autonomous driving system in development. Wave also has an AI model that it calls Lingo One. It uses natural language to help people more easily understand the reasoning and decision-making of its AI driver. Lingo One can respond to questions about a diverse range of driving scenes. For example, you can ask it, why did you slow down? The answers given allow Wave to evaluate the model scene comprehension and reasoning, which can enable Wave to more efficiently pinpoint improvements as well as to help build confidence in the system. This was a few months ago, but Wave is testing its self-driving tech on UK roads with Europe's largest last mile autonomous grocery delivery trial with ASDA. The problem for Wave is that they still need all of the data and before any other automakers are willing to license Wave's technology, how are they actually going to get that data because they already said they don't want their own fleet of cars. In my opinion, there will have to be strong evidence from the data showing a system to work reliably well before a large OEM like Ford or GM would ever even consider licensing autonomous tech. We also have self-driving startup Motional delaying its commercialization plans. Motional started off as a joint venture with Aptiv and then Hyundai got in the mix and so far they've invested just south of a billion dollars. Motional's also laying off an undisclosed number of employees. They said, while we're excited by our pace of technical progress and our initial commercial deployments have yielded valuable insights, large scale deployment of AVs remains a goal for the future, not the present. The company will de-emphasize near-term commercial deployments and ancillary activities. There are some rumors out there that Apple and Rivian are in talks for a potential partnership, but there's really nothing out there further than that. That's not just speculation. It's true, Robin Denholm has sold around $50 million in Tesla stock so far in 2024, but this was from a 10B51 plan that was put in place back October of last year. Plus, at the end of last year, Robin had around $300 million in Tesla stock, so she still holds a majority of her shares. Rivian released its Q1 earnings, and for the quarter, they're losing $38.8 thousand dollars per vehicle in terms of gross profit per unit delivered. That number is indeed down from quarter four when it sat at $43.3 thousand, but they still have work to do to get to gross profitability by the end of this year. In the past, on the channel, we've shown the chart showing Rivian's problem with its free cash flow burn and once again they burned through 1.5 billion dollars in free cash for the quarter. That amount has been fairly steady over the past five quarters not seeing the improvement an investor would hope for. Rivian's cash and cash equivalents is down from 7.9 billion at the end of last year to 5.9 billion at the end of Q1. Rivian's net loss for the quarter was 1.4 billion dollars down from a $1.5 billion loss in Q4 last year. Rivian did say though that gross profit per vehicle loss included $15.4 thousand dollars of depreciation and $1.7 thousand dollars of stock-based compensation expense. Our results were negatively impacted by $9.3 thousand dollars per unit delivered, primarily related to various supplier and other costs incurred in advance of the new technology changes and parts integration into the R1 platform as part of our cost of revenue efficiency initiatives, AKA Rivian overhauling its factory to make upgrades for the upgraded version of the R1 platform after the factory shutdown. Tesla stock closed the day at $177.81, down 3.76%, while the NASDAQ was down 0.10%. It was a lower volume day for Tesla, trading about 30 million shares below the average volume the past 30 days. I'll leave you guys with some words of wisdom from Brad Gerstner of Altimeter Capital. Don't forget, check out Ground News linked below if you're interested, take advantage of that discount, and avoid that media bias as much as you can. Again, no video for for me the rest of the week. I should be back either Monday or Tuesday of next week. Hope you all have a wonderful and a safe few days. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.
Well, first, let me say, I think Elon's done an extraordinary job, and I think his advantage in AI and full self-driving relative to all the other manufacturers in the world is deeply underappreciated. Um, I think that will be an incredibly valuable asset to the company. I don't think it's an asset that can be replicated by other OEMs in the United States. They simply lack the data. And this is data in, pixels in, and control plane out. So unless you have the data, you're going to have a very hard time catching Tesla and full self-driving. I don't think BYD is going to be able to, uh, you know, play in that game either. And I thought it was fascinating at the moment that the United States is banning TikTok, that the Chinese government is providing permission to Tesla to do full self-driving in partnership with Baidu in China. It shows the resilience and the strength of the relationships uh, that Elon Musk has in China and that Tesla has in China. If we start to see the adoption and the conversion on FSD that we think is possible, this will be a story like Apple and services, where services becomes an increasingly important part of their, uh, of their profit makeup.